Hello everybody, this is Mr. Sosa, and today we are going to talk about the basics of Photoshop, how to access Photoshop, how to create a shortcut for Photoshop, how to search for images in Google Chrome, and we're also going to be talking about your practice exercise that um, was sent out earlier today. So, the first thing we need to do is get you guys set up with a folder for all your digital artwork to be located. So what you're going to do, you're going to click on a folder with your name on it. There should be a folder with your name on it when you're signed into VDI. Click on that. Click on Documents. And down here in this dead white space where I'm highlighting, you're going to right click, Create New Folder. Now, you're going to call this folder Digital Art, but since I've already got a Digital Art folder, it won't let me do that, so I'm just going to call it Digital Art Test. But you're going to call your folder Digital Art. This is where all your digital art will be housed, and as you can see, I've got a few things in my Digital Art folder. Okay, so once again, you're going to go to the folder with your name on it, go to Documents, right click, Create New Folder, and you're going to call it Digital Art. But we already did that, so let's go ahead and stop. Okay, I'm going to delete this real quick because I don't need it. So let me tell you where Photoshop is. Let me tell you where Photoshop lives, okay? If you go down here on the bottom left where it says start, it said it's actually a Windows logo. Click on the Windows logo and you're going to scroll to find it. But since Adobe Photoshop begins with an A, it's going to be right there. Adobe Photoshop. Now let's go ahead and create a shortcut by dragging it to your desktop. Now for me, I already have an Adobe Photoshop shortcut so I'm just gonna send this to the recycling bin but this is where your shortcut can live or if you want you can just go through go to start every time and find it it's up to you but shortcuts are really creative you should have a shortcut for Google Chrome that's the engine we're gonna be using to find all of our images but if you want you can you can go scroll down here find Google. I don't know my alphabet, so I'm not sure where it is, apparently. There's Google Chrome. You can drag that to the desktop as well. Okay, but once again, I already have a shortcut, so I'm going to send this to the trash. I think. Okay. Um, hold on. It's freezing up a bit. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Photoshop, and we're going to talk about a few bare basic things about how Photoshop works, how you can create a new assignment. This is your splash screen. This is going to be the graphic that pops up anytime you create or anytime you want to create something new in Photoshop. You're going to see Photoshop open and here it is. This might be a little intimidating because you're thinking what do I do to get started? We're going to typically click on Create New or Open. If we've already started a project and we want to finish it, we'll click Open. But for now, we're going to click Create New. This might be a little intimidating too, kind of like stepping into the cockpit of an airplane thinking, what do all these knobs and bells and whistles do? Um, it's not really uh, uh, that important that we know what everything does. Up here, you have Saved, Photo, Print, Art and Illustration, Web, mobile, etc. Now you'll notice that if I click on print I have letter, legal, tabloid, A4, A6. These are different modes of paper that we would send to the print. Eight times out of ten or nine times out of ten, I would say more eight times out of ten, we are going to click on letter eight and a half by eleven, eight point five by eleven. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create Photoshop is going to create a blank document for me. There we go. And now you have even more bells and whistles. All these items on the left are your tools. 
Down here, this is important. We have what's called our layers bin. Notice now that there's only one layer and it's locked. It's the background layer. Every time you create something new, you'll have a background layer that's locked. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about how these tools work. I want you to notice this area right here, the submenu bar. No matter which tool I click on, it has something different. That's because each tool has parameters of its own. It has rules and a mind of its own. Okay? So every tool you click on is going to be a little different. Now, eventually, we're going to try to get through all these tools, but for now, we're just going to talk about a few. Let's talk about the text tool. If you click T, T is for text. That's the best way to remember that. I can now draw out a text box on your computer with your mouse or with your keypad. And what you're going to get is dummy text. This is text that's used as placeholder. You don't need it. It's called lorem ipsum. I can go ahead and just backspace it because it's highlighted. And I'm going to type out my name, Mario Sosa. Now you'll notice that it's very small. So I'm going to select it. I can go up here where it says 12 point, click on 72. Let's say I want it a little bigger, but Photoshop won't really let me go past 72, but it's actually lying. You can select your 72 point and click on 100, and now it's going to be a little bigger. I can center my text, I can right justify it, I can change the font. Let's say I want this cool murky round, which it's not even letting me um, feature it all on the page. So I'm going to bring it down to about 48. OK, there we go. That looks pretty cool. I can change the color. If I click on black, I can change it to a red. Click OK. But to make changes, your, your text has to be selected. So you're going to select it all. You're going to select it all and then make those changes. So if I want to make it blue, for example, click on the red. This is your color swatcher. I can land on a blue, choose a, a medium blue, a light blue, almost purple, and a dark blue. Let's go for a dark blue. And then just bring this box up a little bit so you're not using all that space. What you'll notice when I created a text box is that there's now a text box layer down here in the bottom right. Okay, If I click on this eyeball, it hides it or it will activate it. But typically it will just be activated. Okay. If I grab my move tool, that's this tool on the very top left, if it's the first most basic tool, I can move my text box around. Okay, I can move it down here, I can move it up here. Everything will move independently from each other and you'll see that in just a moment when we bring in a photo. Now in my last presentation we talked about low resolution photos versus high resolution photos. You want the most high resolution photo available. So we're going to click on Google Chrome. We're going to go to a new tab. And let's say I want to bring in my favorite superhero, Batman. I'm going to, I'm going to search for Batman in the search bar. We're going to search by images because we really don't want to see top stories or the Wikipedia page or anything like that. We want images. So you're going to click on images. We want the highest resolution images possible, so what we're going to do is click over here on Tools, Size, Large, <clears throat> and these are going to bring us the largest images first. Now, if I click on an image and expand it, make sure you expand it. This says it's 960 by 1200, which is good. Remember, anything above 1000 is good. So I'm going to right click, save image as, I'm going to call it Batman, 
It's going to save it into downloads. That's fine. Click save. It's okay to save images to downloads, but you want to save your projects to your digital art folder because the downloads folder gets wiped every day. Okay, so you want to avoid that. File, open. You're going to open on this computer. Okay, it's not, it's asking about cloud documents, so we don't care. Go ahead and click on downloads. You're going to find Batman, and it's going to open up a new tab just like it would in a web browser. Okay, it's going to open up a new tab. <clears throat> so what you can do with your move tool is grab that tab, move it down so you can see both compositions because what we're going to do now basically is grab this image of Batman, click and hold him, and move it over your blank composition. We don't need this original Batman anymore, so I'm going to click X. And now I can move them around. Notice that I can move them independently from my text. Okay? And it's now represented with what's called layer 1. And if I click on layer 1, I think if I click on it twice, there we go, I can rename it. And this is very helpful. You don't have to rename your, your layers. I rename all of my layers by by habit. Um, that's up to you, but I would definitely recommend renaming your layers so that you know what's what at a glance instead of seeing layers 1 through 15. Now if you want to be bigger, there's a certain option box you have to select, you have to click or to activate to make them bigger. Typically by default your instincts tell you you can just grab the corner and stretch it out. Well, if you try that, it's just going to move it. It's kind of annoying. So, when while you have the Move tool selected, you have to click Show Transform Controls. It'll draw a perimeter box around your selected layer. And you can now move Batman up and down. This will be really beneficial for projects like your Wanted poster. Let's say you're going to do Wanted Batman for um, anarchy or for crimes around the city. Okay? And it'll kind of snap them in place. You'll feel it kind of snapping. You'll, you'll, you'll see these pink grid lines that pop up. See those pink lines that just appeared? That's to tell you that it's centered. So that looks pretty centered to me. Um, so what we just discovered, what we just learned, is how the text tool works and how to import images from Google. Another way to import images from Google, you can always save as, or you can simply right click, copy image, go to Photoshop, edit, paste, and now I've got another Batman. Okay, remember that show transform controls has to be activated. It's a good idea just to activate them every day by default. And now you've got two bat Batman, Batman, I guess. Um, to get rid of one of your layers, let's say you have a layer and you want to get rid of it, simply click on the layer down in the layers bin and push delete on your keyboard. It's as simple as that. Now let's go ahead and talk about your practice exercise. I'm going to X out of this. It's going to say, do I want to save it? No, because this was just an example that there's Batman recently opened. We're going to go to our um, classes in um, Canvas. I'm just going to click on a random class. You're going to go to Modules. Scroll all the way down until you see Practice Exercise. And here you have a blank document asking you your favorite food, favorite TV show, favorite movie, favorite book, etc, etc, and the instructions say right-click and save this image to your digital art folder. From there, open it up in Photoshop and begin working. So what we're going to do is right-click, save image as, make sure you go to documents. You got to get in the habit of doing this. I'm going to put it in digital art test, but for you it's going to be digital art. It's going to save it as All About Me by default because that's what I named the file going in. Click Save. Now when we go to Photoshop, 
this is where we click on open documents digital arts test all about me and now I've got my image ready to go so we're going to be importing we're going to be importing different things like our favorite sport favorite TV show when I grow up I want to be a film director I want to be um, a theater actor I want to be an athlete whatever you want to do an engineer so let's go ahead and talk about my favorite movie which is of course Jurassic Park I'm gonna look up Jurassic Park poster go to images get into the habit of doing this uh, uh, tools size large I think <laughs> and we're gonna scroll past the first few because those are sponsored that'll take you to Amazon and I like this poster right here because it's fan-made if I can scroll oh my gosh <laughs> because it's fan-made I like it quite a bit um, it says it's 3300 by 5000 actually I changed my mind I'm gonna click this poster because it's classic it says it's 1170 by 1702 I'm gonna right click save image as it's got a long random name so I'm just gonna call it Jurassic Park poster put it in digital art save it go to Photoshop file open Jurassic Park poster it's going to open it up in a new tab looking good so I'm gonna separate that tab out I'm going to drag that poster over using my move tool. Make sure your move tool is selected. I can go ahead and click X. Now the problem we're running into here is that it's too big. But remember, in Photoshop, everything is scalable. So I can bring it down and put it right about here. You know. My favorite book is Harry Potter and the prisoner of Azkaban I'm just gonna type out Harry Potter 3 cover go to images it happens to be right here but we want tools size large there it is again Harry Potter and the prisoner of Azkaban that looks pretty good. It's 1106 by 1614, which is great. This time, I'm just going to copy it. It's up to you how you work. Copy image is totally acceptable as long as it gets from one place to another. Edit, paste. Just know that when you copy and paste things, you don't actually save them. You're just copying and pasting them. And um, there's not a whole lot of room for favorite books, so you may have to kind of jam it down in here. Um, that's totally acceptable. There it is. Last thing I'm going to show you is how to create your name. It says, hi, my name is. I'm going to grab the text tool. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and draw out a text box. And I'm going to type out my name, Mario. Your first name's fine. Um, you're not going to lose credit if you just do your first name. But I'm going to go ahead and select that. I think I'm going to select that. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller so it fits a little better and I'm going to change the font. Remember that you can change the font. I like this font called 28 Days Later because it's really rugged and kind of gritty. Now let's talk about how to save your work because this is very important. It's very important that you're saving your work as you go because if you create everything and it's finished and then you save it, there's a good chance your computer might freeze up and you lose all that information. So. I would really start saving after my first entry. Jurassic Park, save. Harry Potter, save. Favorite food, chicken and waffles, save. Favorite sport, Quidditch, save, etc., etc. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. You want to save it on your computer. We're not going to save it in the cloud. Save on your computer. It's called All About Me. And it's already in Digital Art Test, which is great, but just to show you how to get there, Documents digital art test and it's going to save it as a Photoshop file so I can click save 
you're going to see another Photoshop format options box that's normal just click OK and now if I click out of this window I can now go to my folder click on documents digital art test click on the blue icon that says PS it's kind of small but it says PS all about me not on the JPEG that was the original file you brought in all about me you'll see your Photoshop files say type Adobe Photoshop you're gonna click on that and it's gonna open up the file for you ideally I don't know why it's being so slow okay there we go it's working now so it's gonna open up and there you go and it's going to pick up right where you left off all your layers are still intact you've got layer one layer two Mario and remember if you double click on your layer you can name this so I'm gonna call it HP cover I'm gonna call this JP poster okay um, I will be opening up your Photoshop files to see if you've included everything but I'm not gonna check to see if you've named everything Again, that's really up to you and for your own organization um, mindset. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this again. Just click save. And you can go ahead and exit out. Okay. And then once you're done, go back to modules on your end. There will be a place where it says turn in. On mine, it just says publish. But on yours, it'll say turn in. You should see some confetti flying once you turn it in because it's a celebration. And that's really about it. So this was today's lesson. What we talked about was how to create your folder, how to find Photoshop, how to find Google Chrome, how to create um, shortcuts for them both. We talked about the text tool. We talked about how to move images from Google search images into your Photoshop file and we talked a little bit about your practice exercise okay um, your practice exercise is due in a few days so if you will please do it in Adobe Photoshop and then submit it to me submit the Adobe Photoshop file okay don't accidentally submit the blank file or I'll email you and say hey you need to submit the correct file no big deal but I will come back and say hey you need to submit the right file so that's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, we're going to start like a train in this class and we're going to move slow. We're going to slowly build momentum as we leave the station. So that's how we're going to go um, in the next few installments of this series. You're going to see how different things work, how different tools work. So this is just the beginning. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've had a great first week of school. This will get you ready for your practice exercise, so feel free to move forward with that. Once again, this is Mr. Sosa, hoping you had a great day, great week, and that you have a great weekend. So, I will see you next time. Goodbye.